Sarah, and today on Budget Sew, so, I'm going to show you how to make two pillow shams. But first, I'm going to show you my most recent make. Today, I'm wearing Simplicity 2648 in a size 16. pattern because it has different pattern pieces for slim, average, and curvy fits. I love this dress. I love how the bodice follows the contours of the bust smoothly and that the waistline sits right at the natural waistline and that the skirt is not too tight and not too loose. It's just the perfect fullness. I made some modifications to the pattern. I made view A with view C sleeves with the average fit pattern pieces. I lengthened the skirt by 7 inches and I removed the sleeve bands because they pulled on the shoulder seams and they also make the sleeves quite droopy. I also replaced the slit in the back of the skirt with a kick pleat. I bought this pattern a few years ago from Fabricland, but I can't remember how much I paid. The original price of this pattern was $17.95 American, but I can't see myself paying more than $6 Canadian. That's my cutoff price because I won't pay full price for sewing patterns. The fabric is a lightweight knit and I purchased it from Fabricland. It was on sale for $4.75 a meter, so I purchased 4 meters. In addition to the dress, I made a McCall's top and a quick sew skirt, but I'll save the reveal of those two garments for a future video. I also used two vintage gold buttons for the front tab. In the comments section, let me know your favorite place to shop for fabric. And while you're there, please like this video. And if you'd like to see more from Budget Sew, please subscribe. Now, on to the pillow shams. During one of my thrift hauls at Value Village, I found a beautiful homemade comforter, but I could not find the pillow shams that went with it. Then an idea struck me. If the comforter was homemade, then maybe the remnant fabric would be bagged in this fabric section. I ran over to the fabric and there it was. One problem though, there wasn't a piece big enough to make a single sham. I decided that I would sew all the remnants together, matching up the design on the fabric. It took a bit of time, but it was worth it. You will need two pieces that are 31 inches by 25 inches for the front fabric to make two pillow shams. You can see here where I matched up the pattern of the fabric and stitched it together. Each front panel is made up of at least four pieces of fabric. For the back shams, you need four pieces that are 20 inches by 25 inches. My next step was to hem the four back panels. I folded over the long side or the height side of the fabric by one inch and then I rolled it over again completely encasing the raw edge. I did this for only one side of all four panels. Then I press the folds in place. Next I stitch them down. My next step was to sew the pillow shams into one piece. Place the front piece of the fabric the right side up, then lay the two back panels wrong side up over top. Make sure that the raw edges of the back panels are on the outer edges of the sham and that the hemmed edges are on the inside of the sham. The back panel should overlap at the center. Before you sew, double check to make sure that the right sides of the fabrics are facing each other. Then I sewed around the edge.
Once that was done, I clipped the corners, turned the pillow shams the right way out, and pressed the edges flat. My next step was to pin the back panel to the front panel before sewing the flange. My fabric was super slippery, so if I didn't complete this step, my pillow shams would not lay flat. I pinned them approximately two inches from the outside edge. The next step was the flange. Instead of marking a line two inches away from the edge on the fabric, I used a rubber band on my sewing machine to mark two inches from the needle. Then I just lined up the edge of my pillow sham with the rubber band and sewed all the way around. I liked using the rubber band because it stays in place when you sew and saves time. If you don't have a rubber band, try using a piece of masking tape to mark the two inch line on your sewing machine. Here are the finished pillow shams. If you enjoyed making pillow shams with me, please like this video. And if you'd like to see more from Budget Sew, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you next time.